Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be proving the Gauss-Markov theorem, or it's going to be the start of um, a few videos actually proving the Gauss-Markov theorem. Um, so let's just remind ourselves what the Gauss-Markov theorem actually is. Well, it says that under a set of assumptions, which we call the Gauss-Markov assumptions, then least squared estimators are in fact blue. And that means that they are the best linear unbiased estimators which are possible. Stated another way, this means that there are no other linear unbiased estimators which have a better efficiency than least squares. So it's quite a powerful theorem and I think it's quite important that we look into how it's actually um, proved. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we think about there being some sort of model, some sort of population model, which is y equals alpha plus beta x plus u. And if we think about what our least squared estimates of, or estimator for the population parameter b, or oh, beta is, um, we know that beta hat least squares is equal to um, the sum of xi minus x bar times our yi, when I've summed from across the entire sample, divided by the sum of xi minus x bar all squared. And again, I'm summing across the sample. So that's our least squared estimator um, of the slope parameter. And writing this another way, actually, we can write this just as the sum from i equals 1 to n of vi times our dependent variable values yi. Written this way, it's actually quite easy to see why we think about least squared estimators as being linear. Because essentially, the way in which I've got my least squared estimates for the population parameter beta is by forming a linear sum of my dependent variables. Yeah, because these vi here are just numbers. Um, and if we write out what vi is explicitly, vi is equal to xi minus x bar all divided by this sort of thing, which I'm going to call SSX, which represents this thing on the bottom. So although I don't need it now, we're going to use these sort of properties a bit later. Um, it's quite useful to have these quantities um, at our hand when we're going through this proof, which is that the sum from i equals 1 to n of vi, which is just this thing, is going to be equal to 0. And the reason for that is, is because when I sum over xi, that just gives me nx bar. So that sort of becomes nx bar in the sum. And when I just sum over x bar, that again gives me nx bar. So there's, this is going to be equal to 0. And when I also sum I over vi squared, which is going to be useful as well, I'm going to get something which is the sum of xi minus, uh, sorry, minus x bar all squared all over ssx squared, which is just going to um, condense down to some sort of number 1 over ssx which is going to be greater than zero. Uh, the reason for that being um, because vi is a real number. When I square it, I get a, a positive number. And it's going to be greater than zero um, because of the fact that SSX is some finite quantity. So when I sum over vi squared, I'm going to get some number which is greater than zero. Okay, so that's the first part of the proof. We're just sort of setting up the problem actually and defining some quantities, the sum of vi being equal to zero, and the sum of vi squared, actually I'm going to write it as this, the sum of, actually that's the wrong sort of pe colour pen, the sum of vi squared is equal to some number gamma, which is greater than zero. So we just sort of set up the problem and the sort of quantities which we need in our head are these um, two quantities here. The sum of vi is going to be equal to zero and the sum of vi squared is equal 